tales for dark nights. This story relates not to ghosts, but to something more malevolent. Guernsey is part of a small group of islands off the south coast of England, and like all small communities, they have more than their fair share of creepy stories. And today, I want to tell you about the legendary Le Chien Baudou, the Dog of the Dead. The beast is said to roam the streets as an apparition, a grave portent of doom. Within the walls of the main port in Guernsey is a small hill, topped with a church, and at the foot of the hill is where the execution of heretics and witches by burning took place. To this day, people will not go there alone after dark. The walls were built around the town as protection from the enemy outside, but it was a paranoia of the enemy that could lie within that led to one of the island's darkest and most shameful chapters. Around the year 1000, when there were increasing fears that the end of the world would soon come in Christendom. The idea of the devil had become prominent, with many believing that his activities on earth would soon begin appearing. At this time, the concept of the witch underwent a relatively radical change. No longer were they viewed as sorcerers who'd been deceived by the devil into practicing magic that went against the powers of God. Instead, they became malevolent, devil worshippers, who had made a pact with him in which they had to renounce Christianity and devote themselves to Satanism. It is a little known fact that the only witch trials by fire to take place on British soil happened on Guernsey. Tennyson once wrote, Sir, in Guernsey I watched a woman burn, and in her agony the mother came upon her, a child was born. And, sir, they hurled it back into the fire, that being thus baptized in fire, the babe might be in fire for ever. The following is an account of this burning. Catherine Gouches, a poor woman of St. Peterport in Guernsey, was noted to be much absent from church, and her two daughters guilty of the same neglect. Upon this they were presented before the dean of the island, who, finding in them that they held opinions contrary to those allowed about the sacrament of the altar, pronounced them heretics, and condemned them to the fire. The poor women on the other side pleaded for themselves, that the doctrine had been taught them in the time of King Edward, but if the queen was otherwise disposed, they were content to be of her religion. This was fair, but it would not serve, for by the dean they were delivered unto the bailiff, and by him unto the fire, July 18th, 1556. One of these daughters was, at the time, great with child. As she was led from the bailiff's office through the town, she screamed and begged to be spared, not for her sake, but for the life of her unborn babe. The bailiff was a pious and a cruel man, but his lack of empathy shocked the bystanders. He struck the poor woman and thrust her onto the pyre. The fire was lit, and guttural screams filled the night. In the middle of the flames and the anguish of her torments, her belly broke asunder, and her child, a goodly boy, fell down into the fire, but was presently snatched up by one of the bystanders. Upon hearing the noise of this strange incident, the cruel bailiff returned command that the infant must be cast again into the flames which was accordingly performed, and a new-born baby was martyred and burnt within a second of life. As the people stood in horror at what was happening before their eyes, the light from the burning child cast a shadow for only the bailiff who had ordered the terrible act. As the bailiff's shadow stretched out behind him, shaped by the light of the fire, it took the outline of a different form and burnt that form into the ground. In the monstrosity of the act, the earth cracked, and Le Chien Baudou, 
The large creature with fur so black it darkens moonlight stepped forth from its bowels and into the nightmares of the people of Guernsey. So goes the story of M. Varcourt, who lived in that neighborhood 300 years later in the 18th century. Varcourt, a local vintner, was driving down the lane in the dark, making his way home, having made his final delivery. The day had been long, and he sat weary and anxious to be home. The night is cold, but dry, and Varcourt has in mind no greater ambition than to retire to bed and close his eyes for now to the world. It is the cold that stays the advance of sleep, but it is a contest nonetheless. Farcourt suddenly finds himself wide awake. Something has caught his eye. The streets are deserted, but there is a form lurking in the shadows. A horse balks. Varcourt has heard rumours of the beast, but has dismissed them as the ambit of children. Struggling to discern what is truly ahead of him, he starts to distrust his senses. Ahead of him a form moves, slowly lurching. It is thirty or forty metres ahead, but its size is horribly impressive. As he sits back on the cart, Varcourt's sense of unease collapses into dread. He is transfixed, though, by the sight ahead of him, as it slowly circles to face him head on. Varcourt can see that this is no creature that he has ever seen before. It is not a creature that is supposed to be seen by man. Its form black, but its eyes are red, an oily blood red. Varcourt braces as the figure begins to lumber towards him. It starts slowly, but its pace unmistakably quickens. Varcourt knows what he must do, but he cannot move. His eyes are fixed on the galloping form. As it is almost upon him, he experiences a moment in its presence. In this moment he sees nothing but darkness, darkness unreachable by light. He hears deafeningly loud the cries of Catherine atop the fire, the wailing screech of a newborn as its skin cracks under the heat of the flames. It is the only sound left in all the world, the screams cast from the flame, his heart thumping furiously, determinedly pumping the life from his body, and then suddenly... It is gone, and he is alone. Looking behind him, he sees nothing but the night. Suddenly, unimaginably tired, he heads home. Explaining to his wife what he's seen on arrival, he heads directly to bed and to sleep. He will not wake. To this very day, if there is ever a sighting of the beast on the streets of Guernsey, it is always followed by a mysterious death. Chilling Tales for Dark Nights 